Today's conversation is with Jeff Dewar. Jeff is the facilitator for the burnt out Zoom support meetings. Welcome to the Burnout Podcast. I am your host, Skip O. This podcast is brought to you by Throttle and Thrive and mypodcast.media. Let me talk to you a little bit more about Throttle and Thrive. It's a treatment facility in California. It's a six-bed unit for men only, first responders. They have a workout facility. They have a 12-step program that they take people to. And they also specialize in their diets. If they have a special diet they need to cater to, they can do that also. They practice with EMDR and talk therapy. It's a very family-like atmosphere. Their focus is to rescue the rescuers. You can go to their website, ThroughtOnThrive.com. You can also call them at 805-701-1309. That's 805-701-1309. And you can also look at the show notes for more information. FDIC International is a conference every year in Indianapolis, Indiana, that offers thousands of fire and rescue professionals from around the world, quality, world-class instructors, classrooms, workshops, hot evolutions, and the most innovative products and services available to the industry displayed by over 800 exhibiting companies. Today, Skip and Jeff get together to talk about FDIC, what to expect, and where you can find them this April. Hey, I'd like to thank everybody for turning into turning in turning in tuning in to <laughs> Burnt Out Podcast. And I got uh, my name is Skip O, and I got my good friend Just Jeff is here. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, Skip, how you doing? Man? It's been a while. It's been a I'm, while. I'm doing good. I'd like to just let everybody know too, Jeff, that uh, Toyota of Muncie here in Indiana is uh, sponsoring this episode, and I really appreciate what they're doing. I appreciate it too. I do indeed, or I wouldn't be here. That's right. How would I be a sponsor? I'm just, I'm just going to throw it out there randomly. I want to be a sponsor. How do I do that? Jeff, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you can go to burnoutpodcast.org, send, send a message you'd like to sponsor either an episode or uh, do a six-month sponsorship or a year. Yeah, we can certainly use the help. I know that because this is all done on our own time. Absolutely. So uh, it costs money to do this stuff, too. So if you could pinch a penny, <laughs> that'd be great. Thanks, Jeff, for reminding me about that. But we're, we're here today. FDIC is coming up in Indianapolis, Indiana. Jeff, what does FDIC stand for? Fire Department Instructors Conference. Cool, because I can never remember it. So I got my good friend Jeff. He's my memory. <laughs> or this federally deposit insured corporation, too. I've seen that. I always go to that. It's the other way. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about banks on a Friday. Never yeah. a good ending. Never. You know, I, I went there in 2018. It's the first time I've been there. I live 30 miles away from it, but I never wanted to go see a fire truck because I had one in the apparatus room. I, I said, I go see that all the time. But... You know, it's 30,000 people, 62 different countries that come in, and it's huge. It's not just firefighters. They got a lot of different stuff, police, military stuff. Um, it's really a good time. And Lucas Oil Stadium, the convention center, and all around there, we kind of take over for the week there, Jeff. Which, your first experience, what did you think of uh, that conference? Uh, when I first went there, it was uh, first time it was held in Lucas Oil Stadium. It was the first public event in the stadium, as a matter matter of fact. So it's been a minute since I've been there, <laughs> or since I've been going there. I've been going there for, what, nine years? So my first impression was overwhelmed. The uh, amount of classes that were being offered, the types of classes, the instructors, their knowledge and, and uh, ability to teach that stuff, too, too, was really cool. And then the... Uh, Exhibits came on. That's what I think about. Wednesday, the exhibits come on. We actually go out to the floor. That's thir- That's Thursday, rather. And yes. you see all the fire apparatus from all over the country. And and then some, too. There's actually some from across the big pond, too. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's hard. You know, me and you try to explain it. It's something you just got to experience. What, you, you think so, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. You're not going to get it done in one day. Um, You go there, you know, Monday through Wednesday, so your classes, you take those, and you take a ton of classes, 
and then uh, Thursday's the convention. And you may be, maybe might be able to get through that one day. I don't know. That's a yeah. lot of walk. That's a lot of walking though. A lot of stuff to see. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. You know, we I went there for American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. I worked that exhibit. I was a volunteer there. And then the next few years, I was with Worldwide Peer Support and American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. This year, we're going in with uh, AFSP, which is American Foundation of Suicide Prevention Indiana, and the Burnout Network podcast. Uh, and we got an exhibit in Lucas Oil Stadium that you can come visit us there if you wanted to this year. Um, on April 17th, there's a dinner coming out. So if you want to come to dinner, this... This airs, this should be Sunday that you're listening to it, hopefully. Uh, we have a dinner on April 17th. So if you hear it before that date and you want to go to that dinner, go to burnoutpodcast.org, send us an email, and we'll give you some free tickets to come in there. Yeah, so this should be airing April 14th. Should be April 14th, should be airing. So the 17th is the dinner, and uh, the convention center starts actually starts Monday, the 15th, and it'll go through, through Saturday. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time. So if you've been there, man, come back. If you hadn't been there, um, man, check it out. At least check it out. Go on the web, our website, burnoutpodcast.org. Check out what we do. And then uh, there's a, if you go on the FDIC.com and go to the floor plan, you'll see all the exhibits going to be there. And you'll get an idea of how many uh, exhibits are going to be there and how many people that, that come to this place. Oh, it's, 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 it's a kajillion people, man. I mean, I met people from Dutch, Germany, France. I met them from all over the country, all over the world at this conference of the years I've been going there. So it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. And if you haven't gone there, look for a good place to eat. I'm not putting a plug in for anybody. This is just not a random shoot. It's not that busy, and it's a little bit off the beaten path, but Old Spaghetti Factory. I've gone there every year. I love their food. is awesome. It's not a real big weight when you go there either, but the food's definitely worth it. Worth it. It's definitely worth it. Absolutely. I tell you, and the food at our dinner, Jeff, it's uh, per- Pork Paradise. He's a firefighter, and he also served in Iraq a couple tours. He owns a bit. He's coming in and gave us a good price. So he's coming in to do pulled pork, pulled chicken, macaroni and cheese, baked beans, dessert, drink, and all that stuff. And then we'll, well, and then we have Matt hungry, Cook. man. Matt Cutman Music's coming in, going to play a little bit before we get started. And then we got the Jason Saltel, who wrote the book, The Rescuer, and Jesus is All We Need. He'll be there telling a little bit his story. We got Chuck from Georgia that's coming in. That's going to be like the spokesman for the burnout one, because I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Believe it or not, I'm going to keep my mouth shut for that dinner. I'm not going to say a word to that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to say, I got got my doubts. I have my doubts. I do. Uh, That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. Yeah, my everybody else probably has their doubts too, because I'm I got a big mouth. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but yeah, you're close. <laughs> Just close. <laughs> well, I tell you, it's uh I know we got a lot of people that are gonna be at that dinner, but Thin Line Service Dogs is gonna be there and they're bringing their dogs in, and that's Ann Jeanette and Wayne uh are coming in to do that. If Wayne's feeling better, I'm pretty uh he, he they're gonna come in. But uh I tell you what. I remember being in treatment at the Center of Excellence for Firefighters a few years ago, or four or five years ago now, and uh, they brought their dogs in, and it was just re- really relaxing. Uh, Jeff, you know how you feel about your dogs and how I do mine. When you don't have that four-legged angel around and you need something like that, what do they do for you, your your dogs? What do they do for you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Mika, my female, she's the one that's been with me since I got out of the center. She knocks me down to the lower level. It keeps my anxiety at bay. It just gives a common effect. Yeah. Um, they get to know you to a, a way they know something's up with you before you even know. And uh, I know that just a companionship too. They're, they're if, you know, if you don't love dogs, you know, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I can't relate to that. <laughs> but uh, just to have them around like that, 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 what do they call it? The, um, that love. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know what you're talking about. Friday. But, unconditional love yeah and that you get that with the dog and it's just something that once you see that you just it's just a certain way the dog acts around you it's just it's awesome it really is awesome i know i it's yeah they give you a look and you know it just kind of goes uh puts a hole in my soul you know in a good way you know they get they can bore through that that depression that anger and just kind of calms me down and helps me when i'm uptight i can feel my shoulders going down and just kind of giving a sigh how i get i relax 
It's not that bad. It's yeah. going to be okay. And that's how it makes me feel. Yeah, Mika picks up on me pretty quick. Um, she'll come up, she'll put a head on my shoulder or something like that. And uh, I, I notice I'm, if I'm feeling down, I know she's feeling me too. So I try to keep my spirits up for her too because it's, you, know, you don't want your dog being depressed as well. That's no fun. But uh, yeah, so I'm fostering an, another dog now too. As a matter of fact, I hope to get him squared away to where he can help other people as well too. But that's a long process ahead still. Sure. Well, I tell you why it's uh, and Jeanette and what Wayne do. I'm really grateful for them. They work with different departments around the United States to try to get uh, service service dogs to somebody that needs them. They got sponsorship the, for dogs that that it's at no cost uh, to the person that gets them. Um, I know there's also uh, uh, worldwide peer supports coming in. And they'll be there. And the Worldwide Peer Support, they help. They're kind of like us. They help uh, first responders get help that they need. Uh, a little bit, we do a little podcast, and we do the, about the same thing. We got one support that Jeff facilitates every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. How's that uh, been going for you, Jeff? It's going good. We're getting uh, a lot more people showing up here and there, which is good. It's man- very, very manageable. There's plenty of room for more people. And uh, we just get in here and just cut it up for about an hour. And if anybody's got anything going on they want to talk about, that's wide open if they want to go to a breakout room we can arrange that as well um if they just want to hang out in a general room just watch what's going on that's fine too why yeah, but it doesn't cost anything it's every sunday at six and you go to the burnout podcast link go to www.burnout.burnoutpodcast.org and scroll down till you see my pretty face and you click on the zoom link there <laughs> it's pretty sad to get that one up yeah you'll see my pretty faces after the first face so you'll know mine Oh, I'm ch- I'm going to change it around a little bit. <laughs> no, we like to have fun. I tell you, the Worldwide Peer Support, they got support uh, meetings on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. They do good work, too. They really uh, put their hearts and souls out there and do good work to help a first responder. And they they, they got a good showing. They get uh, some people in there, too, uh, and do real well. We also got uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. The Indian chapter is going to be there, Jeff, at the dinner. Uh, Kelsey and Tammy, Kelsey is the executive director for Indiana and Tammy's a chairperson of Indiana. Uh, they'll be there with a table, an informational table set up along with uh, heroic deeds. Heroic deeds is, uh, Toby and Chad, uh, they're former police officers and they come in there and they do stuff in Ohio and it's called heroic deeds. They got speakers that come in, it's faith-based and, and uh, it's it's a really good it's a really good organization. Also, Jeff's trying to be quiet. If you heard that, he's trying to open up a drink and being real quiet. It's not quiet. We just had a talk that you can watch out what you do. You could have not open that beforehand. No, no, that wasn't my bottle. That was gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Now yeah, I, wanna... I was trying to. Ju- I was trying to crank my bottle open to be quiet, and that better, it was not. That better not be a Pepsi, because that's what I like. I like Pepsi. That's what I, my that's my kryptonite. It is absolutely a Pepsi. Well, it's I really appreciate really that. Enough. That's like using drugs or drinking alcohol in front of an alcoholic and addict. That's what you just done to me. <laughs> be strong, Skip. Don't don't fall into the Pepsi challenge, man. Don't do <laughs> don't, don't do it, man. Uh, I don't. I try to drink sodas, but I needed a little caffeine today. I had a terrible night sleeping last night, off and on, all night long. So I need a little caffeine to get me through the rest this afternoon. No, I understand but that. I it's getting ready to rain again. So. Oh, that's awesome. You know what You know what a friend of mine said? All sun and no rain makes a desert. But he didn't say the flood's going to come back in and you'll see the ark float by your house like it's been doing in Indiana. Yeah. So, so does that mean no sun, all rain makes an ocean? Uh, could be, could be. <laughs> I mean, going along that analogy, I think that would be good. Yeah, I think that would be work out. Yeah, I, I tell you, it's, uh, it, I tell you right now, Jeff, the sun's coming out, the rain stopped, and I think we're good for three days here. I don't know about where you're at. Well, the sun's out, but, uh, I just got to notice that it's getting ready to rain the next half hour. So that means the sun won't be out. It'll be behind the clouds. It's still there, brother. Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Positive. Mr. Positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. It's just, oh, yeah. It's Here, like, it's here's just... what we had a conversation. I said, Jeff, you got to watch moving around or turning your head or going back and forth 
because it'll change your voice. Now, if you just heard all that, hit Jeff going deep, and then that he's doing all the stuff I ask him not to. I appreciate you. That's following, what I do. I appreciate you following direction. You sound like you're a former firefighter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got a helmet on my wall over here. Says that, yeah, I got scars to show it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've got ways of showing it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm just glad Dad's not here. Dad is our producer because he he's not oh, gonna he's man. not gonna listen to this clip. He said, Skip, just send me an email if you want you want me to edit anything. So Jeff, <laughs> we're golden brother. We can talk about him mm. and do whatever we want to do. Today's password is. <laughs> 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 so there you go i got that one <laughs> so i guess so i guess poop <laughs> poop yes 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 yeah now, if sean had his way he would cut that out that's why i had to slip that in there oh you got to you got to that's yeah that's, and it's embedded in there jeff has some colorful words uh that he says it sounds very good from him i try to say that it sounds like i'm just pushing it trying to trying to cuss and this don't sound right um but I'm an amateur. Nah, nah, I should I try to clean. I shouldn't be cussing like that. I should. I need to work on that a little bit better. A little more. A little more better. A little more better. <laughs> well, a little more better. Yeah. Well, we went, hey, in all seriousness, anybody that listen here, me and uh, I can, I'll speak for myself a little bit. I've been sober 24 years. I've been in and out of treatments before then, back in the late 80s and 90s. Uh, I didn't want to be on this earth. I used to carry a gun around with uh, one bullet in it, and I had to. Get, I wanted to get in that state of hopelessness because I didn't want to be on this earth anymore. That's what this podcast is about. But also, it's about having fun. You know, if we talk about gloom and doom, or if we don't joke around a little bit, you know, that's just that's just wears me down. Absolutely, we can have gloom and doom at work, man. Um, and they try to escape that too. Is a challenge on its own. So yeah, we get out here try to have fun, and the gloom and doom. We'll save that for somebody else. Yeah, it's. Uh, I like to keep happy. Yeah, and if you're not happy, man, if you're going through a hard time, man, get a hold of us. Go to burnoutpodcast.org. Send us, send us a message, and we we're, we are a resource for you who are listening, whether you're a family member or what. If you're not a first responder, you're listening to this, you need some help, man. Don't hesitate to email us. We want to be here, and we can guide you in a certain way. And if we don't know the answers, we know a lot of smart people that do have the answers. It's not me. It might be Jeff or somebody else, but I always lean on. I got a lot of friends around me that knows what they're doing that we can reach out and help you. Absolutely. We, we're in this business. This is what we do now. And so that's our business where we look to find resources for you because we had, I know I had problems finding resources when I had my downfall and I don't want people to have to go through that same jumping through hoops and stuff like that, that I had to go through. Uh, when you're down and out and you need help, you want help right there and then. And we have those resources available to us that we can turn you on to in a timely fashion, too. It won't be like, you know, we'll get to you in three or four days. It'll be a, a quick turnaround. Absolutely. We've had, uh, I know we just got a former New Orleans, Orleans firefighter that flew in here in my town for a while, got him some help, flew back. Hopefully it's working out for him. We got another uh a military person that's uh, called this morning that wanted to help, and we're waiting for the answer for that. Um, man, it's it's like the phone rings all the time, or we get emails, or uh, pe- people reach out to Jeff that, that he knows, or they know of somebody. Um, I remember Jeff was driving to a meeting last night over in Muncie. That's a town over from us. And uh, three firefighters that I went to treatment called me about another firefighter that wanted to get some help. So I called Mark, the director at the Center of Excellence, and tried to work out something with him because this firefighter didn't have insurance anymore. So hopefully uh, that's going to work out. Um, but you know, we, we don't leave anybody hanging, you know, um, it might not be the kind of treatment you think you need, but I always thought, man, I need this. I need, I don't know what I need. When I went through that stuff, I would sit there and just kind of, well, I'll do this, but I won't do that. Well, guess what? If my life was so good, why couldn't I fix it myself? I can't. I needed professionals yeah. or peer support that people will tell me the truth and won't back down and love me until I can love myself. And that's it. I get, I don't know if you ever related to that. Got people want to get help, but they want to do it. They want to pick and choose what they want to do. Not only that, it's uh, picking and choosing is one thing too, but I've noticed that they get in there and get help and they think it's going to, you know, 72 hours, maybe 120 is going to fix everything. And it's not going to happen. It's going to take dedication on your part dedication to whatever you're applying yourself to and time time 
It took time to get to where you're at. It's going to take time to resolve your issues. So you have to stay on course and you have to be focused on that. Because like I said, it, it didn't happen overnight. So it's going to take time and patience on your end to get that taken care of. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. If, you know, if you have a problem and you realize it, you've already accomplished one thing, right? Recognize you have a problem, you need help. You've already accomplished that hurdle right there. So the next one is to get the help. And after that, you apply yourself. You'll get there. You'll get there. That's right. And whether you, you want to go to a full treatment or go to a therapist that's first responder that knows about first responders that can help you, make sure you get to the right therapist. You know, not every therapist knows what kind of jobs we have, whether you're fire police, military, or emergency room staff. So make sure you get to the right one. Um, there's EMDR, there's brain spotting, neurotherapy, there's talk therapy, um, the different things you can do. You know, you got to figure out what's going to resonate in your mind to get all that crap out of your mind and, and out of your heart you know you gotta you know i've had a lot of holes in my soul and uh, i needed therapy i needed the whole thing i i needed inpatient i needed and i still do therapy i'm on medication but it's uh directed by a doctor a physician and it's also monitored by him my wife and this uh, spiritual guide that i got that make sure i'm good at each and every day there you go and how long did you do this uh, which one? Yeah, so I was going to let you figure that one out. How long have you been working on yourself? Um, well, my first treatment center was 1989. And uh, I was in and out of treatment for 11 years. And then I, I got help with the addiction, the alcohol and drugs, but I never worked on the PTSD because I thought I was okay. And then about five years ago, four years ago, um, I went back to treatment, the Center of Excellence for Firefighters, and I worked on all the stuff when my granddaughter died and all the, the kids runs that we have and the fires and this. You know what it is. I don't have to explain to everyone. To, you guys know what it is. but And I continue doing it. So it's been since 1989 until now, I still see a therapist. I you know I still go to 12-step me, meetings, and I, I try to help somebody else out. And that's what helps keep me sane, sober, is trying to reach out and help other people. All right, it'd be five years for me this uh, November when I went to the center. And that's when I found out that I didn't have the ability to grieve. I didn't know how to grieve. Um, I had depression and PTSD, which I didn't really know about that beforehand. Um, I just knew that when I fell into rock bottom, that there was something seriously wrong. I didn't know what it was. Didn't know how to explain it. And... Uh, now, I know about it and been there. Don't want to do it again, <laughs> but I want to make sure that if anybody else have problems that, that Skip and I have had, for them to understand that we've been there, um, we haven't read books to learn this. We've actually applied ourselves physically and mentally to do this. And our, our, uh, our stories will definitely back that up. So don't think we're just some two guys get up here talking about stuff we think we know about when, in fact, we know more about it than they probably teach because we've been in the trenches with it and we've lived it firsthand and it's totally different than reading in a book. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that. Sure. Well, now also we have other facilities to help us throttle and thrive out on the West coast. Uh, Siobhan's really helped us out a lot, not just sponsoring us, but we sent uh, several people out there and she's really worked with us. You know, she's, she's a, uh, not a huge, she's a six bed facility for men. Um, they might do a women's later, but that's all the space they had to do that. But she really works with it, different insurances or no insurances that helps uh, all first responders, not just firemen, fire, police, military. She really does a good job there, Jeff. I s saw a flyer come through. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. That was hey, my go for it. That's that Pepsi kicking in. <laughs> that's what, that, that's what happens, man. That caffeine jamming me. Um, she's taking work with comp now, if I understand. I got a flyer from her and emailed it. So that's pretty good. That's a good step. Man, I'm glad you brought that up because I remember seeing that email too. I just, well, I didn't remember. I forgot about it. So, um, yeah, she's she's good. If you want to get a hold of Siobhan, you can go to Throttle and Thrive. Uh, just Google it. It's on the West Coast. Or you can uh, go to burnoutpodcast.org, email us, and we'll connect you to Siobhan. She's the director out there. But there's a whole, there's a few other treatment centers that we work with. We vetted them. We tried them. We don't just send somebody out without research. You know, we go out there physically and check them out and we ask questions and stuff. And it's just not, it's not just me. It's Jeff and some other people that helps us out too, 
to make sure that we send the person. When we send somebody somewhere, we're sending them because that's a place that we go if we needed it. Right, right. Now, Siobhan's got a one-year anniversary coming up here soon, too. Yeah, I tell you what, she came to FDIC last year, Jeff. She yeah. didn't have the facility, wasn't up and running. She came there. We just met. She flew out. She she uh, gave us some good money to be come out and be a sponsor for us. And and then to see her full come around and help all these people that she's helping that year, it's just been an amazing journey. Not just for her, but us watching her grow her facility and grow um, helping other people. It's just cool. Yeah, she's definitely making it work. She's sad, really satisfying her desire to help other people, too. Um, I, I admire that about her. She told me her task on hand and what she wanted to do, and she's doing it. And I admire anybody who sets her goals like that and accomplishes it. I think that's a good thing for her to do. She's got a good passion for it. And from what we hear, it seems to be working quite well. Yeah, that's correct. Well, just uh, remember, April 17th, if you hear this before then, you have a few uh, come to our dinner. It's uh, at 748 Massachusetts Avenue in Indianapolis, Indiana. Come to our dinner. Um, FDIC is the 18th, 19th, and 20th. The exhibit It's at Lucas Oil. Uh, come in there and uh, check us out. We'll be with Worldwide Peer Support, Firefighters for Christ, um, Thin Line Service Dogs, uh, Gray Matters, um, all kinds of different organizations are in there around us. So we'd like to welcome you. But Jeff, I want to ask you my questions. Okay. Somebody's listening right now. And they're, if they get and they're struggling or a family member don't know what to do with their loved one that's a first responder and they feel like they're at what's in, there's no hope. You got 30 seconds, Jeff. What are you going to tell them? Call somebody. I mean, don't let that fester in your own self. If it's yourself you're dealing with, you need to definitely reach out. If it's a family member and it's beyond what you can do, you need to reach out. So you need to call somebody. And if it's a mental health issue or substance abuse or both, you can go to burnoutpodcast.org and look for references on that page. Or you can shoot us an email. We'll get right back to you as soon as possible on that, too. But don't sit on it and think it's going to go away because it won't. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, do you have any closing remarks before we shut her down? I would like just take a moment here to thank everybody who keeps tuning in, repetitively listening to the podcast and stuff, too. With that, y'all, and the sponsor stuff, we wouldn't be able to do, I think it's the 70th episode. I'm not really sure in the numbers, but it's up there. And if it weren't people tuned in, listening to us on a weekly show like this, and the sponsors, we won't be able to do it. Well, yeah, I appreciate all the sponsors, too, and I appreciate everybody that's listening. Just remember, when you go home tonight, shut your scanner off, shut your phone off, and get some sleep. Thank you. Thank you.